Recently, I just had a chit chat session with an investor who told me that he has a few properties in JB. I was pretty curious why is he having so many properties in JB? Is it because the property is giving him good yield return? To my surprise, on quite on the contrary, the profit return is pretty slow. It took him long time to get break even. When he purchased property from the developer, the developer would definitely charge him future price per square feet. So he's actually buying a high price when he's buying directly from the developer. Because of the high purchase price, it took him a long time to break even. Why do you choose property in JB? Why don't you consider KL? He told me because JB is very close to Singapore. As for KL, it will take him about six hours car ride to reach KL. If anything happened to the property in JB, he can go JB anytime. If anything happened to KL property, it will take him a long time to go to KL. Moreover, he has no friends and relatives in KL, so he's totally unfamiliar with KL. Because JB is so close to Singapore, he gets to go to JB all the time. As a result, he can easily pop into any dev new development and look at the projects. However, for KL projects, he didn't get a chance to visit KL. so. He don't have a chance to get himself familiarized with KL properties. I think what he shared with me is pretty logical. If I am a newbie in property investment in Malaysia, I would definitely think exactly the same like him. Now the next question is, do you buy the property to invest? to earn money or you buy the property for your own retirement purpose. If you bought a property for your own stay for retirement purpose, then I will clap my hand and agree with you, yeah, it's a great idea to buy JB property because JB is so near to Singapore. It's basically just crossing the bridge. If I were to buy a property for retirement, I would choose JB because it's very near to Singapore. However, if I were to choose property for investment, I would choose KL rather than JB because KL is an international platform where all the international business activities are. People from all over the world visit KL for holidays. So in KL, you will get a lot of tourists from all over the world to come and stay in your Airbnb units in KL. However, if you buy a unit in JB for rental purpose, for example Airbnb, your business would definitely not be as good as KL. If that's the case, isn't it that the risk is much higher if you buy property in JB for Airbnb investment purpose? One more thing to take note of. The size of Iskandar Nusa Jaya is six times the size of Singapore. It takes Singapore 60 years to reach our current economic status as the third wealthiest country in the world. Do you think JB's economy is able to catch up with current Singapore economic status in 60 years? Definitely not because the size is too big and its population is too small. Since we cannot compare JB economy to Singapore economy, we shall compare KL economy to Singapore economy. KL property is currently still undervalued. I would say very undervalued. If we purchase the area that is within the triangle zone of TRX, KLCC and Pavilion, we are locating ourselves in a very strategic location where capital appreciation will definitely take place in time to come. Let's think this way. It's just like buying a property in Orchard Road in the center of Singapore. If this place, if this plot of land, the price do not increase, what is going to happen to the entire economy? So unless we think that Malaysia will not progress at all, then there will be no capital appreciation. However, are you aware that Singapore is the second largest investor in Malaysia manufacturing sector? The largest investor is of course USA. The second largest investor is us, Singapore. If there is no potential in Malaysia, why would Singapore investor pump such a huge sum of money into Malaysia? It is important for us to follow where the world's money is going to. Now the world's money is going to Malaysia. KL is the center of Malaysia. So that is where the money is going to. Some of us are thinking that, oh, other than Malaysia, we can also invest in Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, all these countries. 
but let me tell you this all these countries they are military countries if anything happened to the politics our money will be gone as well whether or not we are able to earn money it depends on the choice and decisions that we make if we buy property that is undervalued about 35 to 40 percent we are already having capital gain the moment we buy the property Number two, when we buy the property, we do not pay for the monthly installment. We let the tenants pay for us. By doing so, it just takes time for the capital appreciation to take place. And we are able to cash out the profit when we sell the property one day. If you are interested to find out how, you can use 40k Singapore dollar to buy a property in KL and use this as a platform to stack up your investment portfolio to 400,000 within two years. You can drop me a message in the WhatsApp. I will leave my number in the comment box below. Alright, if you like my video, that's all for my sharing today. Goodbye, do subscribe and give me a like.